Hello, everybody. I am Piyush Prasad. I'm an engineer by profession, and I worked with Sam Weeks uh, for my application to Copenhagen Business School. And it was the first school where I applied, and I secured an admit. All thanks to Sam. Everybody, my name is Sam Weeks. I am a full-time admissions consultant, which means I help determined applicants get into top MBA programs and EMBA programs in the US and in Europe. And today I'm joined by a former client, Piyush Prasad, who got into Copenhagen Business School. Piyush, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, Sam. Hello, everybody. I am Piyush Prasad. I am an engineer by qualification. I I started my career as a techie. I was a Java developer. You know, worked in Oracle for two years. Then I decided that it's time for me to switch and try something different. So I traveled 1,000 kilometers to a new role in a different industry altogether, which was in uh, infrastructure and utilities. And it was a small company, so I thought maybe I'll have a good opportunity to grow there and try different things mm -hmm. oh. and so it's eight and a half years of work experience in all is that right yeah it's eight and a half years two years in it and the rest in infrastructure and in operations right okay so tech slash infrastructure engineering background indian male quite a competitive profile to have how did you feel going into the process well, I knew that uh, it is not going to be easy and, uh, you know, I have to be at my best if I want to get into a school. So the first thing which I worked was on my GMAT. I attempted my GMAT uh, like five years, of, five years back. I gave my GMAT once and I had scored a 710. However, due to, you know, due to the work constraints of maybe I was enjoying the work, then I didn't focus much on the MBA hmm. and eventually my score lapsed. So again, I prepared for my GMAT again and uh, luckily I got a 720 with a balanced score in uh, quant and verbal. So uh, I knew that uh, I had, my GMAT has to be better because Indians on, a, on an average tend to have better GMAT scores you know, because engineers are good in quant. So it is easy for us. It just comes naturally. So uh, GMAT was my first priority, you know, to get a good GMAT score so that uh, at least the first part is done. I don't have to worry about my GMAT being an Indian male applicant. Yeah, so absolutely. that was there. It's a big yeah. factor, isn't it? Indian male applicants, especially engineering Indian male applicants, very, very competitive group, very good at standardized testing, obviously. So yeah. they tend to be expected to have a slightly higher GMAT score than the average. I tend to say 30 to 40 points higher than the class average is a good guide. And so for you, this is exactly what, where you were versus Copenhagen. So do you want to talk a little bit about why you wanted to do an MBA? And then we'll talk about how Copenhagen fits into that. Uh, yeah, I was already in a management role in my current organization. And mm -hmm. at some point, I started to realize that uh, I was lacking in the knowledge part of things. I had done a lot of, lot of things and you know worked in a lot of domains and a uh, lot of functions. But uh, it, I, it, it, it dawned upon me that, uh, no, I don't have much standardized education, you know, how things are done or how things are supposed to be done. Being in a small organization, you don't get that kind of exposure because you have to decide everything on yourself. And that. Or training. So right? I, yeah, there's no training as such in a small organization. We are already constrained for budget. So we don't, we don't have anything for less training. We learn on the job and do it. So I thought that maybe an MBA will help me verify whether what, of, what all I have learned is correct or do I need to unlearn something and learn something. This was my primary motivation to do an MBA. The second was that uh, I wanted to work in a different organization, something which is in a different domain, and mm -hmm. also try working in a different geography. So going out from India is slightly difficult, and that too in my uh, domain where I work in infrastructure, it is more localized. It's uh, unlike mm -hmm. IT where you can work anywhere. Uh, infrastructure is slightly more localized as compared to other fields. So. 
I thought an MBA will be a good option for me, and it will give me the required exposure and the required opportunity to switch my geography and my domain. Right. So you were making a double a double jump, as they say. You yeah. were you wanted to change domain. You wanted to get into Europe and yeah, change work industry. You wanted to move from what infrastructure in India to what renewables it was in yeah. Europe, isn't it? I think that's why Copenhagen fits in, right? Yeah. So for Copenhagen, uh, like Denmark has always been at the forefront of sustainability. Long back, we've been hearing uh, their emphasis on you know, being sustainable. Like they have taxes on vehicles so that they stay off road and you have green taxes and all. So uh, that was a big motivation for me. Uh, the sustainability part was a big motivation. Apart from that, I wanted to explore the lifestyle. The Scandinavia, as you know, is uh, famous for having work-life balance and uh, it is supposed to be the one of the most happiest places to live in. So I wanted to explore all that. So all these things put together uh, led me to Copenhagen Business School. And awesome. one more factor which tilted in its favor was that uh, I am married. So it was an agreement between me and my spouse that we'll be traveling together even if I were to study. So uh, Denmark offers an excellent opportunity for dependents to work on a dependent visa. So that was also a big motivation on choosing Copenhagen. Interesting. How does that compare to other places that you researched? Uh, from my research, US was out of question because uh, their policies are very uh, strict. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, if, a lot of countries in Europe, they don't uh, permit dependents working full time. Uh, the most liberal apart from uh, Denmark I found was uh, Netherlands. They permitted you to work 20 hours a week, which is what a student is permitted. They permitted dependents to work for 20 hours a week. So that was also a consideration. But uh, Denmark has the most liberal visa policies, I guess, uh, sure. among all the countries where I wanted to study. That's a really good point. So what you're saying is if you're moving with a partner, with a spouse, and they want to work while you're doing your MBA, Denmark, so Copenhagen Business School, and Netherlands, I take it RSM, and also Amsterdam yes. are, would be the two that you would consider. Very interesting yeah. point, something that doesn't often get considered. Okay, great. So tell me about how you went about the application process. You decided, right, I want to go do an MBA, Copenhagen, Netherlands, these are my, uh, your, these were your priorities. How did you approach that, those applications? See, I gave my GMAT in December, I got a, a decent score. And then due to work constraints, I, the MBA part was on the back burner for, I guess, a month or so. And then we got in touch. Uh, we had a small meeting and, you know, discussed the colleges where I could apply. And I did some of my own research. Me and my partner, we sat together and decided which colleges I can go to, you know, which uh, will give me the required exposure and the re required opportunity to work there. So Copenhagen, uh, I, we shortlisted a few colleges, Copenhagen, RSM, INSEED, HEC, SR. These were the colleges. So then I sorted them by their deadlines and uh, the ones which I could meet. So uh, I guess we had a meeting in March, first meeting, you and me, we had a small discussion as to how we can go about the uh, the process. So yeah. I did some of my homework. I decided what I want to do, uh, what I have done till now. You know, till, like, if you are applying for a job, you write down the things which you have done so that you can market yourself. So I, worked in my current company for six and a half years. So I didn't have a profile ready as such as to what I've done till now. I've done a lot of things, but I didn't put it in words till now. Right. So I spent some time working on it, you know, writing down what all things I've done. It took me about a week to just remember what all things I've done and what all things I can say in my application or in my resume. So and get I back into that. application mode after six and a half years in your company where you've not had to apply for anything. Yeah. So yeah. that was there. And then uh, due to work, again, uh, due to some work constraints, I had to drop that plan for about a month or so. And uh, by March end, I was uh, relieved from my work and I had time for my application. And then again, I got in touch with you. And I remember we had a discussion. I, the deadline was 10th of April and I wanted to defer it. But uh, on, on having a meeting with you, you said that it's doable. And uh, so that gave me quite a lot of motivation because I was determined to, you know, defer it to the next uh, deadline. So I did my, my part of the work. I gathered whatever I could. And then 
I got in touch with you and then we started the process. That's right. And you started with the, uh, you started, we worked together on an hourly, in an hourly way, didn't we? An hourly package, yeah. not an all school package. Do you want to explain your logic there? Because not all consultants offer hourlies and yet it was for you, it was important. Do you want to explain that? The, uh, uh, for me going hourly, you, we had a discussion before and you told me that uh, I will benefit more from an early packet since I've done a lot mm. of my homework and we didn't have the time for going on a per school basis. Like in yeah. 10 days, uh, there's not much we can do. So you only suggested that it is better we go early. It will be uh, uh, good for it. It will be economical for me and uh, we'll get the desired results. So that was the prime motivation of going early, you know, and it was uh, cost effective for me as well. You know, coming from India, converting everything to euros gets expensive very fast. So, yeah, yeah. so that was the motivation of going early because on a per school basis, it would have been very difficult and we didn't have that kind of time, you know, yeah. work through it. So what you're saying is the hourly package might have been nice, but it, during an hourly package, we go into quite a lot of detail. And I remember we had this conversation. We go into quite a lot of detail about your background, about your upbringing, about your, your university. And, and, some in, and that can be very, very useful. But in some cases, when the deadline is a couple of weeks away, we can, the, the, you, you can cut some of, those, some of that, those bits out and just dive straight into the meat of the matter and go through with an hourly package. And some people choose to do that and it can work. And in your case, it did. Um, yes. Tell me about how you thought about consultants in general, because you use you obviously we work together. Did you meet other consultants? If so, how many? Like, and what was your thought process at that time? What were your priorities? Uh, as far as consultants go, I did some research, and you know whether I whether it's it's a good thing getting a consultant or should you go on your own. Obviously, finance is a consideration. And then I spoke to quite a lot of my friends who uh, went through this application process. Some of them hired a consultant, some of them didn't. So each of them had their own opinion. But uh, I realized that uh, without the help of the consultant, I wouldn't have been able to meet my deadline because okay. uh, there's always work and consultant helps you stay focused. Apart from that, uh, you know, reading the forums and blog posts, there was contrary opinions on uh, having a consultant and not having a consultant. And on but everything. Then, yeah. <laughs> so my thought process was that uh, a consultant does this every day. So obviously he'll be better at it than I will in the application process. You know, uh, you do something better every day. You do something every day. You're obviously uh, better at it compared to the person next to you. So uh, I realized, I decided that uh, let me give it a try. Let me have a word with the consultant. So, uh, I had a word with you apart from you, one more other consultant, I had a discussion and uh, uh, speaking to you, I realized that uh, you know, working with you will help me uh, you know, improve my application a lot. And if, like during the time we worked together, like we did most of our work live, you were editing the essays, I was giving you inputs. And uh, one thing I would like to say is that uh, you bought out the story from me. Like I myself wouldn't have been able to put that kind of story out, which you, know, you prompted me and poked me and got the words out and got the things which I could say in my application. So that is yeah. there that I, I always say it to my friends and you know whoever comes to me that uh, my application wouldn't have been as good as it is now without your help. That's music to my ears. So it was quite intense. It was quite, yeah. you know, it was a couple of weeks. It was, we, we met like, almost every day if I remember right during yeah. those two during those two weeks what was the hardest moment in that process do you remember any points where you were like oh my god like this sucks right what was the hardest point um see when we were writing like uh, you gave me a broad framework on how to write my essays and what points to consider and when I was going through it and putting it in words, I found it difficult to condense the information. I had a lot of things to say, but I couldn't fit into the word limit. So it was getting very difficult for me. You, know, uh, you have to say a lot of things, but you have very limited time. So what I did was I poured my heart out and uh, wrote a hundred word essay, which you and your team later had to put it in a 500 word essay. So that was a hard part. For, a, a, part thousand, for me, you know? a thousand to 500. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, 
you all managed it very well you know i was very impressed reading it i was very happy myself reading it okay i did this i did this and it's written so beautifully <laughs> so a big yeah a big part of the role sometimes is about cutting down you've got you got you got years and years of experience right you've got you've got eight and a half years of experience how to boil that down into a 500 word essay you know how you have to choose you have to make some difficult decisions and i think what what you really benefited from was having somebody to come in and quite brutally say nope we don't care about that nope we don't care about that and and yeah. leaving you with the core message which was what you which was genuinely you and also what the schools were looking for and uh, obviously in this case it worked really really well so what would you say in hindsight you've been through this process now you've got your admit in hindsight what would you advise other applicants who are going through a similar process i'll say if you if it's possible and if you're determined to do an mba i'll say start early and uh, go through your consultants you know have a word with a lot of them and see which one suits your uh, needs like the uh, it may not be necessary that uh, one type of consultant works for everybody so see what works for you and prepare early i'll say work with that college's deadlines in my case it was uh, my concept was very clear that i wanted to get into this year or the coming year i couldn't wait much and my process was that i'll apply to colleges sequentially and take whatever college was given to me luckily uh, copenhagen was the first college where i applied and uh, i secured an admit so yeah so what i'll say start early start early and uh, plan according to the college deadlines mm. good good advice okay awesome so with that all i've got to say is thank you very much for your time piyush really really enjoyed enjoy co- uh, our conversation and it's it's really nice to hear you share a what is a very very a lot of people going through a similar situation a lot of people with a little bit more years work experience than the average very competitive profile very competitive demographic and 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 you're an inspiration to a lot of these people who that should who can see look it can be done even at short notice so thank you so much for sharing your uh, sharing your story and one final thing can i get a high five <laughs> uh, one more thing i would like to add uh, it is all due to your efforts that uh, my application was successful and i would like to say that uh, you know reading my application i couldn't believe that i've done all these things and i've put it into words so beautifully